Well, what it means is in digital economies, the G7 are saying we need to focus on the rights of the citizens. We need to focus on what's happening to them. Do we need a little more? Right? So what does that mean to enterprise architecture? And what it means is there are a number of components that we need to put into our enterprise architecture of the future. Because if we don't, we will break the regulatory requirements that the governments are going towards. Okay? That's the point that I'm making. We can no longer just think about EA and then IT type of conflict. It isn't anymore. It's all about the organisation, the structures. It's all about people, all about skills and competency. So we have to think about inclusiveness, security, openness, standards. We have to recognise that all those people that work in our enterprises are part of an organisation. They're also citizens. They're going to have rights. That's what those principles have said. We need to think how EA is going to address that. So, again, when I started to look at this, I said, well, actually, what it means is we're going to be creating lots of new domains of architecture. So we're going to create citizen architecture. We're going to create AI architecture. We're going to create organizational architecture, cyber security. We probably know some of this already, but now we're going to be regulatory. Now this is where the G7 are taking us. So things that are happening as a result of that is there are operating model transformation going on. Okay. Um, there's a view about what operating models we would have for the future. You know, what's changed? If you look at what our operating models look like, there are changes to the way in which we think about these things. You know, continually renewing disruption, right? Not just, oh, we've got technology disruption. It's a continuous process, you know. Um, we need to think about our metrics, our workforce. We need to think about how people uh, will manage themselves by culture. And when you go into all the different types of models and standards, and I'm not going to bore you with this, this is the new TOGAF one, but it's still not good enough as far as I'm concerned, because we have to have metrics and governance and AI and all sorts of other things in there, which we're nowhere near um, creating at this moment in time. So we have a big job to do in the EA space for determining what our models are going to look like. That's what we do. So there are changes going on in the way organisations are structured. So we have functional decomposition stuff, where you guys know what I'm talking about now. Um, this is how things were. This is now how things are. Network teams, the millenniums, do not like working in that functional stuff. They want to work together. <coughs> and of course, it's not just going to be one team. There's going to be lots and lots of teams across lots of organisations. So there's going to be differences, shared values and cultures, transparent goals, free flow of information. We're going to have new people who will become digital leaders. Are you a digital leader? That's the question I ask. Um, so we're going to have investors, pioneers, who have transformers. We're going to find that for the digital transformation, the business are going to become the digital leaders. Right? They're not going to be just receiving, they're going to be driving, they're going to be part of that digital revolution. So we need to train them to be able to operate as architects within our digital world. We've got lots of HR change going on. We've got job architectures, learning and development architectures, completely changed. LMS is out of the window. We're now into a different type of learning, okay? Dramatic transformations and 
undergoing them. Digital recruitment is already happening. Unilever are doing it. Right? And you're doing it. Everybody's doing it. They're doing something in this space to make changes to the way we operate. So the HR function is going to change in the way we do things. So when I get to the end of this, I start to ask the question, well, what sort of tools do we need? So for you guys, I started off saying I was in the TOGAF space, right? I am still in the TOGAF space. TOGAF is an international standard. I'm not saying it's perfect. Nearly 80,000 people are trained in the use of TOGAF and are certified in doing it. Actually, thousands more than that even. Um, our structure needs to be modified to include AI and digital models. It doesn't at the moment. Our structure currently handles functional architecture and information and security architecture but there's a whole range of new architectural domains that we're not touching. So what my question is, can you help? Can the BCS help us to get our enterprise architecture, models, standards, capabilities, thinking, templates, etc., ready to do it? Because if the BCS can help us do that, UK will be a leader in digital transformation. If you can't, India will. China will. Somebody else will. It's happening. I want to present this to you to ask the BCS, what can you guys do to help us get digital transformation, a key element on our agenda in enterprise architecture? What can you do to help us do that's my question, right? And, and that's why I did this presentation today, because we need help. The world cannot do this. Open Group on its own, running Toga, cannot do this. It's too big a job. We need people like you, who've got lots of experience in this space, to help come join us and enable us to make the changes. So, are you ready to begin? Are you with us? Can you help us? Can the UK do this? You are our future. Right? I need you to join and do this. And I've been doing this now for 20 odd years, 30 years nearly. Right? I need new people, new blood, new people to come and help that digital capability. There is the reason that Theresa May made her statement. Right? UK government do understand that there is a big job to be done. And you need to help us do that job. So I'd like to say thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm quite happy to take questions and I shall be here till the end, right, afterwards. And I can tell you all about TOGAF and all of that sort of stuff that's going. But what I will say is, it's not going fast enough. And we need you guys to help us go faster. Okay? Because if we don't, we'll be behind. And we don't want to be behind the way of doing it. Do we? Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jim. We've got the usual, I think. We've got the usual buffer of eight minutes now between sessions, so um, two asks, if you could go to Slido and perhaps put any thoughts and feedback onto there, we'd much appreciate it. And while we're doing that, as Judith sort of implies really, any questions and perhaps any initial ideas to your point of how can we uh, progress as well, let's, uh, let's use the, the time we have. One minute comment about your uh, final slide with Toga it's adding on to it. Yeah. I'm wondering whether we need to challenge it more than that, in the sense that um, fine scientific transformations is a very close link between technology and business. And actually having these things in between in terms of the layering can actually be part of the problem. I, I, I totally agree. It's, it's all about organisation and digital. Right? I, I was going to just those are the two key things to discuss. 
But the thing is, to make that happen, you have to do have lots of different views about how you're going to do that, which is what these domains were really just trying to reflect. I actually think there's a lot of domains that we're going to have to develop, a lot of domain thinking. And um, I think we're going to see a lot more different skills coming into the EA space, out of the business. Right? And I, I just mentioned the HR and the organisation and the design. Yeah, that's quite big. Those aren't those guys aren't architects, but they're architects. Right? And uh, you know, what can we do to help them? Is the question I would ask. And I agree with you. The selling message to a CEO is the business, the organization, and the digital. It's not IT anymore. <laughs> Don't talk IT. Right? Talk digital. If you talk IT, you'll go. Yeah, I know we've got all these IT things, right? Don't talk to you. Talk digital. I talk about how the whole world is changing because digital is more, you know, it's more than IT. It's AI, it's internet of things stuff. Okay, the IT department is very, very well placed to be able to help them lead in that space. But I think you've got to transform into a digital organisation, away from an IT think organisation, right? Um, if, if we can't get out of that, uh, I will say to you, I have already seen teams of people in the IT department go, because the CEO wants a digital platform. We just, just the other day, we saw Clydesdale Bank buying Virgin Bank, right? Because of, they have now a digital platform. It's not their IT anymore. Right? So just to play devil's advocate, is the Open Group the right organisation to do that? It's, or should it be something like the Industrial Society or some, somebody it, else? It could be lots of societies, right? <laughs> it could be lots of people. I'm not saying the Open Group per se, but they are an international consortium, right? One of the key things that um, you have to recognise, this is a global thing. You have to have a global standard. So one of the principles did say, we need to have standards which are global, basically. So they are a mechanism, but there may be many other mechanisms that we can use to also leverage them. Um, you know, I just happened to spend my life in the open group because I believe that I can make things happen there, right? And that's what I do. I make things happen. But where I come from, it could be a lots and lots of different capabilities. But we've got to pull it together. I can't argue and fight. I mean, I have to say, I am really fed up with the agile enterprise architecture. I, mean, I look at them and I go, God, you haven't got a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Right? You've got to remember where I came from 40 years ago. Right? I know all about Agile and building Agile capabilities because I built it there. Agile is no different then. It's just doing things faster. And they're doing things without a backbone. And that is the big mistake. You need to have your backbone thinking uh, in place. Right? As I say to my students, when you build a house, you don't start building the bathroom or putting the roof on it before you put your foundations in place. Right? You have to have foundational stuff around which you can hang the whole thing. You have to have regulatory capability. And so when you put the whole together, right, we have to do that. We have to put everything together. And that's my that's my message. We see that? Yeah? Big picture thinking, guys. We've got to get out of our little bit of doing our bits of programming stuff. Uh, I call it EA programming. You know, you've got to get out of that. And then it's all met meta model and defining this component. All that has to be done. But what we need to do is look at the big picture of how we're going to bring that together. And remember, citizen architecture. So if we don't, we'll get lost. That's where the world is driving. So outside of government policy, do you do you see there's any particular tri triggers or um, things that will force the issue, things that will um, 
know, get into this territory first? Oh, I think I think cyber security is a big thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the fact is that countries have been closed down because of cyber security. Yes, that's true. Right? Cities have been closed down because of cyber security. Because we didn't get it right. We didn't think about our EA thinking. Right? We did silos of thinking. Well, that's okay, as long as you've got your big picture thinking as well, and you can slot it all together. But, you know, if you just <coughs> read things from the web, not necessarily. I think things like, um, I mean, obviously, classic manufacturing, energy <coughs> is a key one. Healthcare, you know, huge amounts of change in the garden in healthcare. Biotechnology is going to come in up fast. That will overtake us. If we haven't thought about how biotechnology is helping some of our organisations <coughs> and enterprises, and I've been in commercial organisations for years and years. It may not be something that most people think about, but it is actually quite critical. So if we don't think about that, then we're going to find ourselves again overtaken. So we need to look at that big picture of change and transformation. And I, you know, any one thing, I think there's too many of them. This is a fascinating topic. Regrettably, we are out of time, but we do, of course, have, after the last session, have um, a Q&A and sociable uh, time as well. So uh, the conversation can continue. Thank okay. you again, Judith. Thank you very much. you a question. Raise your hand if you believe, and I mean truly believe, that enterprise architecture can have a massive change and impact, a positive impact on organisations. Does. Hmm? Does. 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 Does
raise your hand again if not only you believe that enterprise architecture could have a massive impact on organization, but you're passionate to make sure that each and every engagement that you get involved with ends in a positive result. And say I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> this is the last session of the day. Let's go with a bang. So, oops. maybe you can put a place where actually going to a boardroom scares you. You're worried about what are they going to be thinking? Are they going to be judging you? Have you got the right information in front of you? Can you actually convince them? that you've got the right path that they should follow. Perhaps you find actually that people just don't listen to you and you find that you, you're lacking influence and you can't build those consensus that you need to be able to make the change happen, to be able to see through at the end exactly what you know needs to happen. Potentially, you're in a place where people groan when they see you. You're seen as a problem, they're not seen as an enabler. They may even call you things like the treacle truck driver or the waffle lord. <laughs> <laughs> so, just picture this. You're actually in a position where you don't, you're not afraid of entering the boardroom because you know exactly how you're going to talk to everybody. You can pick out the exact arguments that you need to and present them really well. Not only that, but imagine. If people no longer groan when they see you, they'll hang on your every word because they know what you are delivering is gold dust. And just picture this you can sit back and relax because you've got the confidence that you know what the answers are. So, if you're in a position where you have all these problems, where you, you've been called the waffle lot, but really you'll be seen as the digital driver. Something's got to change, hasn't it? And for that, you need to change your mindset. And the mindset change we're going to be talking about today is all around how you approach enterprise architecture in the boardroom. Now, what do I mean by enterprise architecture in the boardroom? So, enterprise architecture in the boardroom for me is all around discussing all those fabulous models and artifacts and methodologies and, and taking the essence of that information we've gathered, all that due diligence, all that hard works. You guys work hard, right? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, come on, guys. I know it's the final session. Let's get some energy. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. We work hard to try and make sure every single engagement works well. And that's what it's about. It's about being able to take those specific items, those bits, those salient points that you need to have either some direction or a driver, or something where you need to highlight and you need a decision that you made. And get them to make that decision. It gets them to concentrate on that one singular thing you need to Because, let's face it, we're all facing the same challenges today. And I think every single lecture I've spoken to listen to today has had the same thing, and that is we have to do less with more, more with less. Yes or no? Yeah. Probably do the around as well. <laughs> We have to do more with less. And what's that really mean? It means, fundamentally, that our time is incredibly precious. And time is probably the one element that you'll never get back. And that means you have to pick the arguments that you're going to have. You're going to have to pick the elements in the architecture that really make the difference to have those conversations with you. Because surprisingly enough, every other member of that board that you're going to go see has that exact same challenge, that exact same problem. 